Hi, this is Elizabeth Huttinger with the 2020 Initiative. Schistosomiasis, a parasite affecting 200 million people, has been the fastest spreading epidemic in recorded history. The outbreak started in 1989 and 25 years later remains unabated. The cause was a new dam that changed the ecosystem by decimating the predator of these parasites, so there was an epidemic of human disease. West Africa has some of the highest transmission rates anywhere in the world. Africa alone has 184 million cases. This is how you catch the disease. It starts on the left with the parasite cercari, who burrow their way through human skin. The larvae then flow through the bloodstream into the lungs and eventually turn into the green worm, as seen in this photo, attaching themselves in mating pairs to the portal vein of the liver. There, they produce 400 eggs a day. Some lodge in the liver, provoking damaging infection. Other eggs end up back in the water supply, where they are multiplied by the snail. Inside the snail, each egg creates 1,000 new cercari that flood back into the river in search of the human host. Egg-laying schistosomes have been found in the urinary system, where they produce a thousand eggs per day, in the lungs, in the spinal cord, and even in the brain. Today, many villages still have an infection rate of over 75% because the only line of treatment is a drug that does not prevent reinfection. People are reinfected just as soon as they go back in the water to do their laundry, to bathe, collect water for the house, to wash their animals, water their herds, and swim. This is the native river prawn that became extinct in the late 1980s when the dam was built. As a result, without this predator that eats snails, the snail population simply exploded and so did schistosomiasis. Schisto is second only to malaria as a vector-borne disease and is the fourth leading cause of global morbidity. Freshwater prawns are very well known for their snail consumption, eating about one-third of their body weight every day. They eat snails most aggressively during their growth period because they grow a new shell 30 times until they reach adult size. So there is a huge need for calcium to replace their shells. River water, on the other hand, is so pure that its calcium content is nil. So the only dietary source of calcium are the shells of the little water snails that they hunt and devour. The goal of this research project is to bring back the missing predator and see if balancing nature can eliminate schistosomiasis. We imported baby prawns from the Lobo River in Cameroon. This is what they looked like on arrival. Then, two pairs of village sites were selected for their high infection rates. Two sites where we treat the water with prawns and two sites that are control sites. Here is one of our control sites. Controls are left untouched. Though the population has been properly consented and enrolled in the study and will receive better medical care than they do now. Here is one of our research sites where flow-through cages have been built to be as faithful as possible to the natural flow of the habitat to keep our sturdy little prawns on site eating the snails. The research design is actually very simple. We treat 600 participants, whether control group or test group, with the drug praziquantel to create a zero base of infection to start with. Then we come back six months and 12 months later and test the population for schistosomiasis. We expect people protected by the prawns to have much, much lower rates of infection. The project involved over a year of preparation, mostly dialoguing with the villagers to enable them to comply with the protocol and really own the results. The flow-through fence was designed by the Senegalese Aquaculture Agency. Dead weights and a heavy pole ground the mesh fence and we located it to enclose the tall grasses where the snails hide. Local villagers everywhere worked with a professional team cutting new dock spaces for fishermen to isolate the enclosures. 
After the enclosures were built, the prawns arrived one week later, and the entire village, even village chiefs and moms, helped us release them into the water. At Pokotan, all the children came running down to the beach after school for a hands-on lesson in ecology. Here's our team. The man on the right, Amadin Taban, is one of the village reps. Once installed, it was back to business as usual for our study participants, who are mostly mothers and young children, chosen because they're not likely to have any other water contact except nearest their homes for the next year. A secondary outcome is a sizable crop of giant freshwater prawns to either eat or sell. As a point of reference, the local market price for freshwater prawns is about five times higher than the price of fish. Here is the partnership framework of Projet Crevette. Our lead partner is the University of California that we coordinate with the Ministry of Health, the Ethics Committee on Human Research, the National Aquaculture Agency, and Gulf Aquatics. There are 38 team members working on this project on three continents, most of them with advanced academic degrees. If successful, we will scale it up to be a sustainable, free-range fishery that can be applied wherever dams have changed ecosystems and caused schistosomiasis. As a final note, let me report that Steve Gaines, Dean of the Bren School of Environment Policy and Management at UC Santa Barbara, said that Projet Crevette represents a new frontier in health where ecosystem management is used as a public health intervention. He said the project will break new ground in ecology, public health, food security, and economics. I hope you will continue to follow our exciting progress. This is a unique convergence of villagers, doctors, and scientists coming together and solving one of the largest challenges in global health. Africans in the